I am going to take my blood pressure every day for 30 days. I got the idea for this video after listening to a podcast from Jordan Syatt talking all about how he not only discovered that he did have high blood pressure, but also how he ended up lowering it. And I just think that it's something we don't talk enough about as fitness professionals. Most of the stuff you see on social media is very aesthetically based, but if you've been here before, you know that I prefer training for long-term health. One of those things includes blood pressure. So over the next 30 days, I'll not only take my blood pressure daily, but I'll explain what your blood pressure is, why it's important, and how you you can keep yours in a healthy range. So let's do it. <laughs> but first, a word from today's sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community where the possibilities are endless. If you've been around for a while, you know that I used to work six different jobs. That's the fitness industry for you. And that lifestyle of constantly hustling was terrible for my health, even my blood pressure. But a few years ago, I was able to subscribe to something better, no more hustle culture, and no more 15-hour workdays. Working for myself does have its own challenges, but Skillshare helps make it possible. One of my goals this year is to use my time better, so I'm taking 21 days of purposeful productivity, forming habits for long-term health with Mike D. I am definitely the type to work every moment of the day if given the opportunity, so I'm hoping this course will remind me why I chose to leave that hustle culture in the first place. Remember that no goal is too small and Skillshare has thousands of courses to help you along the way. Now, if you're working toward a goal this year, I have a deal for you. The first 1,000 people to use my link down below will get a free month trial to Skillshare. So if you end up snagging one of those memberships, I would love to hear what courses you end up taking down below. So go snag one of those memberships and learn how to design a career for you. Let's take our blood pressure. <laughs> So it is day one, yes, it comes with batteries. I was worried about that. It is day one of taking our blood pressure every day. And for our first day, we're gonna just simply take our blood pressure, see what our starting point is at. And then as the days roll on, we'll talk about what your blood pressure is, why it's important, how to reduce it if it is a little bit too high, all that good stuff. I purchased this myself on Amazon. I'll link it below. Batteries are in. Okay, so here's the knobby and here's the holy. Those are definitely the scientific words. Ooh, it's on. Please remain seated and refrain from talking during measurement and keep cuff at the heart level. Oh. Error, please take measurement again. Yeah, give me a sec, lady. Do I, if it goes, which way? Am I stupid? Is this not right? Oh, it's stuck. Am I doing it the wrong way? Mm-hmm. My God, I'm gonna need help. Okay, she's on. Here we go. So you press the little button. Please remain seated and refrain from talking during measurement and keep cuff at the heart level. is systolic 123 millimeter of mercury diastolic 78 millimeter of mercury your pulse was 59 Ooh. Your blood pressure is normal oh yeah <laughs> Okay, so those are a lot of numbers a lot of things that you might not understand so let's talk about what is your blood pressure Blood pressure is the pressure of circulating blood against the walls of blood vessels after the blood leaves the heart. How many more times can I say blood? <laughs> your blood pressure is essentially how intense your blood is pushing through your body. And there are two different numbers or parts of your blood pressure, systolic and diastolic. Systolic is the top number and it's the pressure in your arteries after the heart contracts. Diastolic is the bottom number and it's the pressure in your arteries while your heart is resting and refilling with blood. Now a normal blood pressure is agreed to be somewhere around 120 20 over 80, but why is it important?
Medically speaking, there are plenty of risks associated with having high blood pressure, aka being hypertensive. Just to name a few, you are at a much higher risk for heart attack, heart disease, and stroke. I'll kind of pop up here like where most doctors agree high blood pressure actually lives in terms of numerically. And these numbers are taken directly from the CDC website. Now, if you're like me, you'll probably hear things like risk of heart attack, risk of stroke, and just kind of be like, not me. It couldn't happen to me. Like those things, especially when you are young, feel very like far and out of reach. But here's the statistic that scares the shit out of me. If you are 35 years old and you have a blood pressure of 150 over 91, your life expectancy is 55. Excuse me? That is so young. So if you weren't concerned with checking your blood pressure before, Maybe do so now. And also keep in mind that on the flip side, we don't want our blood pressure too low either. We need a certain amount of pressure to push the blood through our system, just like water running through the pipes of your house. You don't want it too high, you don't want it too low. You want it just right. I don't even know what that was a reference to. Now, the majority of people don't tend to find their blood pressure being too low. One in three Americans do have high blood pressure, so that's a very large number, and the rest of this video will be directed toward those people. But your health is just as important as anybody else's, so if you are suffering from low blood pressure, I encourage you to talk to your doctor. Now, luckily in most people, high blood pressure can actually be lowered by simply changing our lifestyle. Yes, there are absolutely people who are genetically predisposed and will actually benefit by being put on some type of medication. But with most people, it is typically recommended to try adjusting lifestyle changes that are within your control first. First thing that's recommended is movement. The general recommendation is 150 minutes of exercise weekly. So if you wanna break that down, it's like 30 minutes, five times a week. And this can be anything from formal exercise, like strength training, you can go on daily walks, aim for 7,000 steps daily. And if you currently have zero movement in your routine, I just encourage you to pick one thing, start small and build from there. The next recommendation is looking at your diet. This is definitely a tough one for people, but it is beneficial not only for your blood pressure, but for your overall long-term health. You can do things like reduce your alcohol intake, lower your sodium intake, make sure that you're getting enough micronutrient-rich foods like vegetables, fiber, get in some lean protein, and really understanding how to prioritize balanced meals most of the time. Another recommendation is regarding smoking. You shouldn't do it. <laughs> and next on the list is your stress. Oh, this is such a hard one. This is something that I deal with too. Not necessarily that I have like stress day to day, like I'm pretty good at managing that. It's more the recovery part of stress. I'm talking about sleep. <laughs> So one of the things to look at is your sleep. Are you sleeping enough? Are you sleeping well? I've made a few videos on sleep, but really addressing like a pre-sleep ritual to improve the quality of your sleep will help with your recovery and stress. If you have stress from things like work or your personal life, really stepping back and looking, even if there's little tiny micro changes you can make to help pull back on some of that stress. Obviously a lot of this is out of our control, but the more that you find things you can control, the better off you're gonna be. <laughs> and then the final recommendation is to maintain a healthy weight. I will say that this one is not only a little outdated, but it's a little too simplified. You know, body weight does not automatically equal health. It doesn't tell us the big picture. Like your the number on the scale is not your body fat percentage. It is your bone density. It is your water weight. It is your lean muscle mass. Like, like there's a lot more going on there. And I think it's more important to look at your body composition, but also like look at those internal markers of health, things like your blood pressure, things like your cholesterol. How is your aerobic performance? Like, can you climb the stairs without needing to sit down and catch your breath? So I personally would not use the scale as an indicator of health and I would prioritize those other things instead. So do you need to take your blood pressure daily? Absolutely not. That part of the video is like for pure entertainment and some nice fancy transitions. But if you haven't taken yours in a while, 
I would highly recommend you do so. Go to your local drugstore, they probably have a machine. If you can afford it, you can buy a little one online. I'll leave mine that I got linked down below. If you have a doctor's appointment coming up, make sure they check it there. And remember that even though lowering your blood pressure through lifestyle changes sounds really simple, right? Eat well, stress less, move more, those things can be really difficult to implement. So if you're having trouble implementing those things into your life, I do probably have a video on it. <laughs> but you can always leave me a message down below or shoot me a DM on Instagram and I will be sure to try and help out the best that I can. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos and I will see you all in the next one.